call on the author of the bill, the member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy, to present the bill. There is an author's amendment at the desk. Would you like to take the author's amendment first, Representative Murphy? Yes, Madam Speaker, I would. The clerk will report the amendment. Murphy E. moving to amend House Senate File 460, the third engrossment, as follows. The amendment is coded A5. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. This is uh, the last amendment, I hope, for the General Assistance Medical Care Bill. <clears throat> this is uh, technical language from the Department of Human Services and language that has been agreed upon by uh, myself, Representative Dean, by the members of the Senate, Senator Berglund, and by the administration, including the governor, and I'd appreciate your support. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion prevails, the amendment is adopted. There is another amendment at the desk. It is going to duplicating right now. Um, Representative Emmer, it is your amendment. Would you like to present the amendment? We won't vote on it until everyone has it. Okay. The clerk will report the amendment. Emmer moving to amend Senate File 460, the third engrossment as follows. The amendment is coded RA 10 to 13. Representative Emmer, to your amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you, uh, Representative Murphy, uh, Representative Dean, everybody else for their hard work. Uh, and Representative Murphy, I didn't have a chance to go over this with you beforehand, but it does three simple things. On page 14 of your bill, uh, you create an ombudsman. Uh, and what this amendment that you will see proposes to do is to eliminate the, uh, the creation of that ombudsman. Uh, because from our perspective, we don't need another, uh, another bureaucrat. Uh, the second part of it that's more of more concern, Representative Murphy, if you have uh, the bill in front of you, if you would turn to page 21 of uh, the bill, at lines 21.3 to 21.6, I think that this is uh, frankly eliminating all privacy for the poor. And I think uh, this is not what was intended. I, I don't think uh, if we're trying to help the poor, the poorest of the poor, that one of the things we want to do is just give away all of their uh, uh, information without their consent. Uh, members, what it says is county agencies are authorized to use all automated databases containing information regarding recipients or applicants' income in order to determine eligibility for uh, general assistance medical care or Minnesota care. Uh, and then it says such uh, use shall be considered sufficient in order to determine eligibility. Uh, the amendment that uh, I've offered proposes to change that, that uh, we don't want to automatically uh, violate uh, someone's privacy just because they want to participate in a government program. What it would propose is changing your language to allow someone who is applying to the program or participating to actually consent to have their information made available uh, and refusal to give the consent obviously would uh, uh, preclude them from participating in the program. And then the third uh, part of the amendment, the last part, simply puts a sunset on this proposal for the end of the next biennium so that we can actually look at the proposal and how it's working and, uh, and talk about uh, where we go Thank with you. it. That, yep. okay. uh, Madam Speaker, is, uh, is the amendment. I, and I, I offer it uh, today, uh, and I'm not sure where it is in the duplicating process. Uh, you may want to hold it because uh, my understanding is, uh, unless members want to actually see the amendment, uh, my understanding is uh, leadership has determined, Madam Speaker, that there would be no amendments. I think somebody has communicated that to me. These are problems, though, with a bill that I think uh, are uh, uh, something that is important. I'd at least, uh, before I take action with the amendment, uh, like to hear the author's response. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. On the issue of the ombudsman, this is uh, actually not something that we first agreed to, but it was recommended by the Department of Human Services, and I support it for this reason. We are um, embarking on a new model of care uh, for a vulnerable population. 
there are very few reporting requirements for the providers in terms of uh, what they're going to be doing in exchange for a global payment. Um, there are uh, appeal rights for the enrollees, some reporting requirements for the facilities, um, and that's about it. So I think that it would be important as we're embarking on this new model of care for vulnerable population that there be someone designated to respond to uh, the concerns and complaints that may be coming from enrollees so that we're able to understand what those are and react to them. And that's why I support the ombudsperson. With regard to the data privacy, um, what you see in the bill is actually current law stricken from the current GAMC um, uh, statute. It's just been lifted from the current statute and placed in the new statute. And uh, it is important that we're able to get information from enrollees so that we know if they're qualified to be enrolled in the program. And last but not least, on the issue of the sunset. You know, I'm a little interested in the sunset um, because I'm not quite sure how this program is going to work. But we agreed that this was going to be a permanent program. And so I would ask members uh, not That's to support right. the yep. idea of a You're sunset. Right. Thank you. Rep. Sam Emmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And thank you, uh, Representative Murphy. I, uh, one of the issues, obviously, when you say there are very little uh, restrictions or requirements on providers uh, who seek to get this global payment, I mean, let's, let's be realistic. We're actually uh, squeezing the providers, in effect. My term may be different uh, for you. But as part of this coordinated care uh, a delivery system that we're embarking on, uh, which I would submit they could do that on their own, uh, the, funny that we're putting it in a statute, but we're, when we suggest there's a global payment, I think people out in the public should realize that there's a lot less money here. I mean, uh, we're not asking them to, uh, uh, in fact, the incentive is for them to find other places for these people to find care. I think we would agree on that. Uh, the sunset provision, I appreciate your uh, interest in it. Unfortunately, we didn't have this discussion uh, beforehand. And then, uh, again, I, I understand what you're doing with the information, but just because someone uh, lacks the uh, financial resources supposedly to participate in the program doesn't mean that they should automatically have to give up their right of privacy in order to uh, get into the program. They should be given that choice uh, before they are enrolled, and I think uh, it's a mistake to do this in the way we have. We're, in essence, giving our government the, uh, the right over the citizen who should have the choice, one, if they want to participate because they need to, and two, if they want their private information automatically available to the government, and uh, that should be their choice. With that, Madam Speaker, based on uh, the agreement that uh, not all of us were privy to, but I understand has been uh, reached, I, I will uh, reluctantly withdraw my amendment today. Representative Emmer withdraws his amendment. There are no other amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate File 4-6.